Hey, morning, Schlock fans. We are at the shop already. I did get a bicycle ride in with the dog. I did get lots of things done this morning, but I wasn't filming because I was going crazy and <laughs> trying to get everything done. Uh, so here we are at the shop. Day two of Morgan's life being affected by the coronavirus with kids at home, wife at home, all the craziness. And you know what? It's a lot like normal day. Uh, I mean, my poor wife is having to work and take care of the kids. So giant shout out to Ruth for stepping up and just being an awesome woman and doing amazing things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sweetheart. I love you so much. Um, but uh, the sun came up and there's still dirt out there to ride dirt bikes on. So <laughs> we're gonna be all right. Um, this weekend, we're going to Peach Valley uh, to ride dirt bikes. Um, I want everybody to make sure they don't lick each other and don't uh, kiss each other unless you're married or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Um, but you know, don't take any unnecessary risks. Um, but go out and ride your stinking dirt bikes, guys. Uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. Uh, first on the lift today is the 50 Mini from Otis Inda. Let's get after the daily schlag. All right, first things first, gotta make a cup of coffee. Uh, because of the craziness, I only got to have one cup of coffee this morning and that is just not nearly enough. So while we're waiting for that, let's talk a little bit about another cool bike that just showed up. Uh, pretty excited about this. The FT500 Ascot. That is actually super rad. Not a lot of those floating around uh, anymore. Um, we get to work on that thing. I'm excited. Uh, we've worked on it before and we never really got it to demonstrate its issue uh, which is that it doesn't like to start when it's been sitting for a couple days uh, you got to spray some either starting fluid or brake clean or something like that and then it fires right up and then once it's warm it runs good if it sits for one day it's okay uh, two three days it seems to not start so um, we couldn't make it do that um, but maybe we didn't let it sit long enough um, and then while the guy was riding it down here it actually just died <laughs> So he had to push it a little ways to get it here. Uh, so yeah, we gotta figure that out. That's gonna be a cool one. Um, should hopefully find something interesting. I'm thinking maybe it's in the carburetor, just needs to be richened up a little bit uh, on the pilot circuit. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a cool bike. If you don't know what those are, Google it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, what else is going on here? Oh, we got a new carburetor coming for the Trail 70. That'll be here soon. We got parts coming for the uh, 250 WR Husqvarna out front. So that's gonna be awesome. We're rocking and rolling. Turns out the coronavirus is awesome for motorcycles. So let's get into uh, this little 50 of Otis Inda. Uh, it it starts and runs just fine, no problems there, but uh, it seems like the clutch isn't quite working right. The engagement's a little off and he has beat on this thing for quite a while. Uh, he's a little dude and he rides hard. He was with us in the Kids ride, uh, I'll put a card right up here if you haven't checked that out, the kids ride where we went down Eagle Valley and did all this other stuff. He was there and he was rock and rolling on this little thing. Uh, so we're gonna swap the clutch and do a full service on it and I'll show you what that involves. All right, as always on a service, we start with the air filter. This one actually looks really good. Good job, uh, Otis, actually probably your dad, uh, um, CJ, but backside, nice and clean. Air box, nice and clean, super happy about that. That makes me happy 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 in my little soul and basically this is like the coronavirus preventer for your motorcycle so just think of it that way <laughs> so i'm gonna go clean this thing uh and then we'll get the tank off get the you know change the spark plug and then we'll pull that cover off and take a look at the clutch because i got a whole new clutch pack um probably just going to install it even if this other one looks okay i will make some adjustments and then we'll save the old one as a spare just in case Also guys, a uh, quick um, blatant plug for some merchandise. We got shirts with this logo uh, now available. I'll put a link in the description. If you're interested in supporting Two Strokes and the channel, um, it would mean a lot to us. Um, obviously, if you can't afford it, don't do it. But if you like stuff like this and you like t-shirts, uh, check out that link. Um, like I said, every little bit helps us uh, spread the gospel of two wheels. So, okay. Spark plug.
Oil looks good. That means CJ's been changing it appropriately. These things just wear out eventually. And there it is. What a cool thing. Let's go take a look at it. All right. So this is the new style KTM auto clutch. So uh, this part actually attaches to the transmission, which is just a gear <laughs> to the rear wheel. Um, this part is what attaches to the motor. And yeah, with this gear right here, that hits the crankshaft, crankshaft spins this, and then this slips until these little balls, there's, it's like an old school recluse. These little balls swing out and compress the uh, clutch pack, engaging it, turn the rear wheel. So we're gonna take these out, uh, take a look at this clutch pack, measure it, and then uh, probably just install the new clutch pack and set the adjustments, which are right here, and then put it back in, finish doing the service, and it'll be ready to rock. So another reason to get soft jaws for your vise is you can clamp down on that gear right there and not worry about messing it up. All right, so when it's being that tough, that's when the blue wrench comes out because you, what you don't want to do is strip these bolts. I don't have any of these bolts laying around and I'm guessing that the dealership doesn't have any. Uh, so if you're putting pressure on it, it's not coming when you really think it probably should because these aren't big bolts. It's time to get the blue wrench out, heat things up a little bit before you go for it. Let's see. My guess is that'll come. There we go. Good, how are you? Sweet. Yeah, just junk them right there. Well, they make you guys drive around in the coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no sign of us slowing down. Yeah, so. I didn't think so. It's been good for the motorcycle business because people are like, can't work. So like, screw it. I'm going to go ride. Yeah, go do something. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> Let's do Even it. better. Right on. See you, man. Have a good one. You can see the wear and the kind of glazing on this. That's on the steel dry, the drive plate. So we're going to go ahead and put this new one in. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll have this one as a spare because it seems okay. It's not new, but it'll be all right. So. Kind of just set them over these little circles in here. And some of them just go on this piece just to hold it up. And then some of them go on the adjusters. So. It's just a little bit different situation than normal, but you got to line them up because some of the springs are inboard and some are outboard and you got to make sure you get that lined up correctly. Bearings on first. So now this is when it's honestly super kind of annoying because of the style. Because this had these tines have to go over to those drive plates, and you kind of gotta wiggle them. I think I think we got them all. There we go. Sweet. Now we gotta set these uh, um, adjustment screws all the same. The way to do it, you gotta bring them all the way out first. Because as you, if you go in, they won't stop. They just kind of keep clicking on the end. So you go all the way out. Then you set them a certain number in. It's kind of the opposite of a suspension, but they do click. So we're gonna go, oh, let's go uh, 10 in. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
10 clicks is uh, a relatively aggressive number. If you come out, the more you go in, the higher the RPM before the clutch engages. Uh, so, and I think the total number of adjustments is around 13 or 15 or something like that. I'm sure someone can comment below what the actual number is. I just don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but like I said, as you go in and eventually they bottom out, they don't continue, they don't stop. Um, the little, the way that mechanism is situated, it'll just keep spinning when they go in. So that's why you always come out and then measure in. Um, but, uh, like I said, I think the total number might be 15 or something like that. So 10 is relatively stiff setting, but that's good because that means that when it does engage, it engages hard. Um, and, uh, we should be good. So we're going to try that now. Um, got to put oil in it, new spark plug, and then we'll give it a shot. take take back off take a look at the plug see what it looks like and then uh maybe take that carburetor off and see what's going on never know all right i think i figured out the 50 i think the stator is junk uh, i was measuring the resistance on that thing it's actually jumping all over the place and then it changes when i rotate the motor and anyway <laughs> so that's no good that's what happens when these things get super hot and it got super hot the day we rode um and i think that it killed that stator so i'm waiting on cj hopefully to bring me a stator i think he's got a spare uh at least i hope he does uh now we are moving on to the xr 400 uh stator so customer got his own stator because he found one from uh, ricky stator for a really good deal and honestly ricky stator is good there's a lot of stator companies i'm not a fan of like going aftermarket with but those seem to be really great. And like I said, he saved a bunch of money, so that's awesome. Um, it's okay that we didn't get to sell it to him because I just want him riding. Um, that's the most important thing to me. So let's get that thing swapped out and kick this thing over and see if it sparks. All right, guys, so we got everything all hooked up. Uh, it's actually pretty sweet. Everything just matches up on these Ricky Staters. They have extra output, so if you wanted to put another 100 watts of light or go to a battery or something like that to charge, you could. But everything bolts up there. Now, let's come over here. And we got everything all plugged in, ready to go. We'll delete these wires. But let's see if we got any spark. Yeah. There we go. I don't know. I think you got... <laughs> I think you guys can see that. I can see it. It's sparking. So that's awesome. So I'm going to put the spark plug back in it, put some oil in it, uh, put the gas tank on it, make sure it fires up and runs okay. Uh, and then uh, we'll button it up and give the customer a call. He'll be stoked. He can get out and avoid the coronavirus on his motorcycle. about that very very happy about that that's one more thing of my list of little things to do um, that uh, should have been easy uh, that one was easy for sure kind of um, <laughs> had a couple little things to fix other than just the stator but we got that dialed 
And now I'm going to clean the lens off. Uh, now I'm going to pull the WR up here and fix the petcock. It's actually pretty cool. You can repair the petcock on a Yamaha. A lot of bikes you can't, but this one you can. I'll show you how that goes. All right, guys, so we got the WR up here, ready to rock and roll. Uh, like I said, we're just going to fix this petcock. That's the cool thing that you can do on Yamahas and some other ones. Um, and all you need to know, like, all you need to look at to see if you can fix it rather than replace it is to see if it's got screws here instead of rivets. If it's got rivets, you're out of luck. Um, but Yamahas generally have screws, so we'll take this apart. It's super simple. I've already drained the gas out of the bike. Probably a little bit more is gonna come out. Ugh. Ugh. The smiley face is what I call that. Although he looks more scared, like he's scared of the coronavirus. <laughs> I know, I really shouldn't joke, but I can't help it. If you don't joke, you're gonna cry, right? So, all right, I'm gonna dig that thing out of there. Got to clean this guy off really good. And kid even comes with new screws. There we go. Just like that. Moves all nice and smooth. Just like that, ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna put a new fuel filter in this thing. We'll fire it up, make sure it runs good. Um, if you watched one of the other slogs, I cleaned the fork seal, seems to be doing just fine. So I think we've got that covered for him. Uh, yeah, should be good to go. guys end of the day uh got everything done well almost done this little guy's getting a stator uh because i checked it it's definitely bad uh, they got one in stock so i'm gonna go grab that in the morning get this thing done uh but i got everything else done today which is awesome so now i'm ready to work on the yz250 and give it my undivided attention there's the beautiful cylinder there's a bunch of parts there's the motor over there the frame is outside over there and uh, so i'm gonna get that here in just a second uh, roll it in and get ready to rock and roll tomorrow guys stay positive through this whole coronavirus thing it's gonna pass things are gonna sort themselves out one way or the other it always does um, life will keep going we will keep going it's not awesome but it could be worse I love you guys get out spread the gospel of two wheels and please for goodness sake Right now is the time you've got to find some positivity and get out and ride your dirt bikes!